This is Roxanne. How can I help you? Hello, uh, I'm a tenant here at the Aspen mm -hmm. House. Okay. And um, I just had some questions. Okay. I, I live up on the 17th floor, up on top. All right. And um, I've been leasing uh, roof space to uh, some wireless carriers. Cause they've been putting antennas and satellite dishes up there and stuff. Okay. And, uh, they're saying that um, like I, I'm, I'm unable to lease any more space because we've run out of electricity. Like, uh, you know, we don't have enough power, so I need to get some new electrical panels installed in my apartment. You have leased out space on the rooftop of our building. Correct, yes. To whom? Um, well, I have uh, four clients right now. I have a AT and T, Verizon, Sprint. Uh, I want to get T Mobile up there, but we've run out of power. And then there's some uh, government um, people. Oh. They they're also leasing. A, they okay. they've got a satellite up there. Okay. And what's Dish. your name? Uh, my name is Roy. And your last name? Zerbel. Okay, sir. And you said you actually live here yeah. on the property? Yeah, it's uh, 1705. So, um, do you know, would you guys pay for the extra electrical panels, or is that something I'd have to pay for? Um, I am going to let you speak with our property manager. I don't even, oh, I don't see you on the lease for 1705. Oh, yeah, well, the guy on the lease, he, that's my business partner. I, I'm the one that got him to start leasing all the space, but now I live here. I'm just not on the lease. Hold on one second. Hi, this is Michelle, the property manager. How may I help you? Hello. My name's Roy. I live in 1705. Okay. And I don't know. I've this is You're the third person I've talked to. Do I have to explain it all again then? Well, um, she went into a little bit. We have um, a person, Charlotte, that lives in 1705, and we do not lease space to residents on the rooftop. Yeah. Well, no, Char we're, we're on the top floor, so the roof would be ours. But Charlotte's my business partner. And we've been renting out antenna space to cellular carriers so that people get better cellular reception here in the city. Okay, uh, but we're not looking to do that. We already have contracts with AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint, so we already have contracts with them in place and set up. We I, don't... I know, but I have separate ones, and, and we, I've put a dish up there for uh, the government. Does the owner know of this? I, I don't know. You're not, supposed to put a, you're not supposed to put a dish up on our rooftop. No, you can put it on your balcony, but not our rooftop. No, that's not your property. Well, it's just the part of the roof right above my apartment, so that would be part of my apartment, that part of the roof. Okay, yeah, the dish is nothing that you, you can't go up on the rooftop. You can't do anything with the dish. If it's attached to where the balcony is, that's fine, but that's it. Well, you're talking about like a little dish, like Dish Network or Direct TV. Correct. Yeah, no, this isn't for television. This is for, I don't know, talking to the space station or something. I don't know what they do with it. But okay, well, you're not, legally, you're not supposed to have anything on our rooftop. No, the, the government said it's fine, and I, I lease space from Verizon also. I mean, they're leasing space for me. It, it's for Not on our rooftop, no. Yeah, no, I've ar I'm already doing that. Uh, they, they said no, they you're have, not allowed to do that on our rooftop they, at all. They, I mean, if I find out that it's there, we'll have it removed. They said they have antennas up there already for uh, voice, but these are like new uh, antennas for data, like for their new data network. Okay, you need to actually up. go through our corporate office, and they yeah, a signed lease needs to be done. You just can't huh? just put a, something up on the rooftop and have it there. Well, That's illegal, and we'll have it removed from our top, of course. It's not illegal. I looked into it, and I own the part of the roof it that's is. above it's, my apartment. You don't own part of the roof. You, you're a renter. Well, yeah, you don't I'm own renting any it. of the rooftop. You don't, and you're not even on our lease uh, contract, so you need to remove that immediately. Because I will have the maintenance guys go up and check it out. And if there's anything that does not belong to at t or Sprint that has a signed lease and they are paying to have their, their equipment there on the rooftop, a signed lease has to be done. So, yeah. no, you have well, to remove it immediately. Uh, if, you, if you guys remove it, I'll have you arrested because that's government property. It will be removed because you're illegally having it Well, you'll it be there. arrested. You'll be thrown in Guantanamo well, Bay or something. Cause okay, you need to remove it because you're not even on the lease. You're not even a resident here. Well, it, I, it belongs to the government. They're just leasing the space. So if you mess with the government's stuff, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, well, the government's not leasing any space from us because if they lease it, they have a signed contract. They do with us, with me and Carol. Well, you don't have a signed contract with us in the building, so that's illegal. It doesn't so matter. It's our space. We can do what we want with our space. If it's in your balcony area, you can have it there, but if it's up, if it's attached to the rooftop, no. So, so I can put antennas and satellites all over my balcony? No, you can't. There's a you just told me I could. You're, you're not in the lease. Term. 
Sir, what are you asking us now? What are you asking for? Because I don't understand why you're calling, because now you have stuff stored on our building, and you're not even supposed to have it there. Yeah, well, no, it's okay, because it's, it's above my part of the apartment. We, we're going to install a hatchway from our living room up onto the roof, like so we can go up there directly. No, you, need, you can't have a hatchway. We're gonna, you can't change and modify the, the way that this, the property is. You can't gonna, do that. We're going to fence it off so people like you don't take our antennas down because that's illegal. No, you and can't that's government do that, property. sir. Sir, um, you know what? I'm just going to speak to Sharla, who's on lease, and uh, speak to her. Thank you. Well, what? Are you going to transfer me Snow again? Snowplow show. Snowplow show. Snowplow show. Snowplow show. Okay, bitch. Snowplow show. Roy. What? Roy. Okay, fucking dog. Steve Dave. Fucking dog. Oh, fuck you, lady. Turnwinder? <laughs> okay. Go, 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 sha, go, 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 who the hell are you? Steve Dave. No, 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 no. I, you're not making a lot of sense. Sense, sense, sense. My wiener. What the fuck is that? You don't say that word. You are some kind of asshole. Bob Dabalina. <laughs> Bob Dabalina. What's this? Bitch, asshole. Fuck you. Fuck you, bitch. No, 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 no. Fuck you, bitch. Have you ever been fucked in the ass? How dare you talk to this dog like that? Bird blinder? Fucked in the ass. Meow. Goodbye. Dabalina. Meow. Meow. Blue. Goodbye. Dabalina. This is Sensei Doug. What? Sensei fucking Doug. Who's the good boy? Who's the good boy? Who's the good boy, Westy? Is it you? Are you the good boy, Westy? Roy. Steve Dave Rock Bob Dabalina. Go suck a dick. Roy. Steve Dave Rock Bob Dabalina. Go suck it in. <laughs> Listen, Westy, you little shit. <laughs> Turnwinder? Okay. I think you're full of shit. I think you're full of shit. Cactus, 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 motherfucker. Hello, everybody. You're listening to the Snowplow Show. I'm your host, Arby, and this is episode 440. It's sponsored by FOD87. He's one of those Patreon supporters that support the show over at patreon.com slash phone losers. If you enjoy the show, you should be a supporter, too. Supporting the show gets you at least one extra show per week in a big old archive of shows and stuff. Today is February 14th, 2018. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. I have an article here. I'm going to possibly read it. Maybe not. I don't know. It looks kind of boring, to be honest. I just want to make fun of this girl real quick. Uh, it's an article. It's on a, a website called RadioInc.com, and I'm guessing it's a blog for people in the radio industry. But this one's titled, My Life as a Millennial in Radio. And in quotes, it says, Relating. It's by Georgia Beasley. Paragraph 1, blah, blah, blah. Paragraph 2, blah, blah. The subject of millennials came up, and he pointed out that some of our staple segments are causing less and less millennials to tune in every day. We've all heard those funny segments, usually played on morning shows that feature prank callers, right? Well, how relatable is that for younger generations listening? Let me explain. I only have a cell phone, which means I always know who's calling me. In fact, younger generations usually screen numbers they don't know and wait for them to text if something is needed. While very funny, how realistic is it for someone under 30 to relate to ever experiencing a prank call like that? Not very, but this is a great opportunity to task a few members of your team that are millennial or Generation Z to develop a few outside of the box ideas. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Man, I really want a prank call Georgia now after reading that. This has been in my show notes forever. It looks like I put it in there back in July of 2017. And I've just been putting off reading this. I really want to call Georgia, but I'm looking around on the website. I can't find a phone number. She wouldn't fall for it anyway. She's a millennial. Those millennials, they're impervious to my prank calls. Oh, well. I don't know. I just think it's funny. I see these articles come out every once in a while that talks about how prank calling is dead. It's impossible. Nobody falls for it anymore. Caller ID has completely rendered prank calling obsolete. I thought there was more to the story than that. Holy crap. I'm sorry I read that. What was I thinking? I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes, though, if you want to read all of the missing paragraphs that I just didn't want to read. At least I can erase that from my show notes now. One more thing before we get started with the show. I have set up a new page on the Phone Losers wiki page, which you can find on phonelosers.com slash wiki of ways that I've been insulted by Roy Sipians. And I did this a week or so ago after that Adopt-A-Median show that I did where the guy told me to take it up my ear. 
So I put that one in there. I put a few others in there that I could think of at the time, like Go Suck a Lemon, Roy the Retarded Boy, Take a Running Jump. I think we could compile a really huge list of different ways that I've been insulted over the years. So if you want to contribute to that list, I will put a link to it in the show notes. Or you can just go to phonelosers.com slash wiki and find it yourself. I'm sure you guys know I'm just trying to divert attention away from the page where you guys make fun of all the words that I can't pronounce. If I make more pages like this, then that one will just kind of be lost and people will forget about it. That's what I'm going for here. Okay, let's do some pranks. But first, we have a song by Henrik, as usual. I've been in the real estate business for most of my life. Mm -hmm. Here's a request from someone named Kid That Loves Flip All The Switches. The recipient name is IDK, and he says, Hey Brad, I need your help. So I live in a trailer park, and they put new trailers in. No one has them, so can you say you live there, and you have no water, and they never gave you the key, and you have to climb in the window? Couldn't you have at least given me a trailer number, Mr. IDK? Or the name of the trailer park that I'm supposed to be in, or I don't know, something. But I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to call this number and I'm just going to basically say what you told me to say and see where it goes. This is Natasha. Hey, Natasha. Uh, this is Roy. I'm one of the new residents here. Hey. Hey, I was never given a key, so I've been having to climb in the window and there's no water in here. A key? You know, to the trailer. What is your lot number? I don't know. Like 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 fifty eight I think. Fifty eight? Maybe. No I don't I, I didn't get any paperwork either. I've just been kinda pretty much squatting in here. Oh no, that's not good. Yeah. Cause you did you sign a lease with us? No. Yeah, you could you can't live here until you sign a lease with us. Oh, well too late now. I have squatters rights. I I just I don't know, okay. is there any way someone could come over and just give me a key so I don't have to go in the window? Um, well, I don't a have a key because I, I don't know, I don't even know a trailer that you bought. Well, um, well, I didn't buy anything, you know, I just, I just been coming in the window, that's all. Um, and there's no water in here, I've been peeing in a bucket. Okay, it's gross. Um, I need to know what lot number it is. Uh, 58? It, the, I don't... I don't have a Rory and... Yeah, well, I wouldn't be on the thing. I didn't sign anything. I just I kind of showed gonna, up. I'm highly confused. I'm going to have to call the owner of the home. Oh, why? Who's the owner? Because there's a... Oh, well, I can't give out that information. Um, and we don't own the homes. They're all owner-occupied, so I can't give oh. you a sticky or turn water on or anything like that. So I should just call a locksmith. Um, and you said 58. Would you guys pay for the locksmith if he had to change the lock? Like, drill the no. lock? No. No, that's, that's not my home. Uh -huh. Um, there, there's an owner to that home. We own the land. But you guys manage everything. Yeah, see, you own the land. You wouldn't pay for the locksmith? No. That's, that's not our... Hold on Crud. just one second. And you, are you at the home right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm in, inside. The phone works. Just, there's no water. 58. Um, this guy says he's climbing through the window, and he has squatting rights now. There's no water to it. Um, he's going to call a locksmith. And you guys have to pay. I haven't either. 58. I didn't even know nobody was living in that home. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't... Can you tell him he doesn't know what he's talking about? Yeah, somebody lives there so in 58, so that's not the home that you're in. No, it's definitely the, this one. I'm, I'm in here. I just, I can't look out. I can't open the door and look out because it's locked. But anyway, like that guy that was talking in the background, can you tell him he doesn't know what he's talking about? 
real quick? Um, no. <laughs> we're trying to figure out what we're supposed to do I here. know, but he was just spouting off nonsense. Just telling me he was no. spouting off nonsense. No, I'm not, I'm not going to... Uh, no. <laughs> who who is he? Do. Is he your superior? Yeah. Yeah, because he's, he's, this guy's in the house right now. Okay. Can you tell him to shut up? Absolutely not. Um, what, somebody what? owns that home. Yeah, me. I have so, squatter's no. rights. No. Um, what is a good phone number to call you back on? Uh, just the one on your caller ID. Yep. I don't know the number here. I, I, it's not my phone. I mean, it is my phone, but I didn't hook it up. You can't just go into somebody's house. No, it's mine. Like, it it's mine. That home. I'm, I'm, I live here now. I have no, squ- squatters owns rights. That home. Yeah, me. No, somebody just, physically owns that home and has a title in their name. Well, nobody's and here. Please. It's just me. I asked the neighbors. They, they're like, nope, nobody lives there. So I just went in the window. So somebody lives there. Yeah, me. I live here. No. So you'd no, think no. if I live here, I'd be able to use the front door like a normal person. Um, instead of climbing no. in the window like a hobo. You can't live in the trailer um, unless you sign a lease with us, first of all. Oh, can I come and sign the lease? The private property. Can I, co- um, can I come and sign the... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a hold of the owner of the home. Can you get the lease out for this trailer for me to sign? Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm... We'll just scratch out their name. Um, no, absolutely not. I can't do that. <sighs> all right. I absolutely cannot do that. Um, I'm calling my manager right now. Um, oh, who was that guy that was spouting off nonsense? I thought that was the manager. He works here, yes. Oh. And he knows well, he the laws and stuff. So well, he, he, doesn't know, he doesn't know him very good. He's, he's just going on and yeah, on about stupid Somebody things. lives in that home. Um, who? What's their, what's their name? I can't give you that information, but there's an owner of that home. If I open up this file cabinet here and find paperwork... And, or, or no, there's mail. I'm, in the, so, I'm calling the like, police. No, don't call the police. Yep, I'm calling the police. No, right now. no. Look, I'm just a prank caller. I'm not in this trailer. I'm just messing with you. I live in Oregon. Don't call the police. That'd I'm s- calling the police right now. Um, this is a business. Yeah, but like I'm in Oregon. I'm a prank caller. Okay, well the number that I'm got a phone call from, um, I'm giving it to the police. Okay, so, that, that's fine. It's just, it seems like a waste of their time since I'm not really in the trailer. I'm just a prank caller. Well, that is awful. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a dick, but it doesn't, you know, you shouldn't bother the police over it. I'm just being a dick. That's okay, all. well, you have a nice day. Um, I'm... Going to, going to go bother the police over nothing? Over a dumb phone call? What is your where, name? Where someone acted like an insane person? What is your name, sir? Roy. Roy. Yep. Okay, Roy. Um, well, you have a great day. Um, okay. And I, this is awful. I know. Can, just can wasted you? wasted my time at my job. Oh, but wasted no. Wasted my it, guy's time going over to that house. Probably going to disturb the guy that owns the home. It's going to give everyone a fun story to tell, though. Like. No. Like, okay, you have a great your, day. Your day is <laughs> so much more interesting. <laughs> Who is this? Who, who are you calling? I I was trying to call um, Gary. I think. Uh, th- this is this is Gary's wife. Hello. Yeah, I th- I think I got the wrong number. Well, no, no, Gary's not here right now. Gary went to the video store. He'll be back soon. Oh, wait, is Gary the name of the person that lives in that place, then? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, is she going to do it again? Let's find out. Hello, this is Gary. Ah, oh, shit. So, I'm sure most of you know what happened, but, you know, she hung up the phone, and then she picked up before it actually hung up. It sounded like she mashed the, the keypad with her open palm. I don't know how that was the number she dialed. What the hell was that? So I played the sound of a ringing phone, and she thought she reached somebody. I hope she realized it was me. I think she did, because I was hoping she'd do it again, but then she just hung up. 
Anyway, strangely enough, uh, just a couple of requests away from that one, a couple days, I got another trailer park submission from Micro Corgi, and it's a place called Cactus Mobile Home Sales on Cactus Trailer Court. It looks like a few people live there, so you could pretend to live with a resident, maybe say they're planning on turning the trailer into a giant replica of Noah's Ark restaurant since there's a big flood coming. About a mile away, there used to be a popular restaurant that was shaped like a huge wooden ark. There was a big uproar when it was torn down. The owners would immediately know what you're talking about. Okay, I'll try that, I guess. I'm going to look at this one on Google Maps, and wow, it's like, it's, it's just like this lot right next to an interstate. It doesn't look like there's a wall or anything next to the interstate. They just have to listen to traffic all day. That sucks. And I'm counting the trailers. It looks like there may be about... 25 to 30 trailers there so i don't know let's call them up tell them i'm gonna open a restaurant i guess i don't know how the the addresses are labeled or anything let's give them a random number again i guess cactus cactus hey um i i'm a, i'm one of the residents here this is roy and who is this roy i needed to let you know i'm gonna be turning my trailer into kind of a big arc type thing like you know that restaurant they torn they tore down yes uh, i'm gonna be making a a, uh, a big arc type thing on top of my trailer so the bottom part's gonna be my living quarters and then on the top part i'm gonna work on an arc you know since we're right, right we're right by the interstate I, I figure i could bring in a lot of business that way this is roy who? Roy. Are you my tenant? Yeah, yeah, I'm one of the people here. I'm in the white trailer. Which one? What number? The the white one. But yeah, I'm I'm like I'm not gonna mess up the trailer. I'm just gonna build an arc on top of it. It's gonna be like really, really tall, like that old restaurant. You remember that old restaurant? That they tore no. down? Like a mile away, you don't remember the big restaurant shaped like an arc? You don't remember that? Yeah, you're building that in your in my park? Yes, yes. I'm gonna build it right on top of my trailer. I've got it what all What number you live in it? What number you are living in? Thirteen. We don't have it a lot thirteen. One thirteen? I don't know. Look, it doesn't matter. I'm in the white trailer. I'm I'm just saying I'm but, uh, I think you are calling a wrong place. Oh, Cactus Mobile Home Sales, right by the interstate. I'm on Cactus trailer drive court i mean yeah what what lot you live in it uh I, it's the one here uh, near the back by the trees but like i'm calling to find out like how are we going to work out parking spaces because we're probably going to have a lot of customers coming in so like we have a small yard area here i think it can accommodate maybe five cars are you talking about number 26 on top of the hill yeah that's the amy's one. trailer yeah, yeah. I'm her boyfriend. Who, who are you? I'm her boyfriend, Roy. Okay, yeah. I don't know you. So that's why I'm confused. Yeah. I never met you. What do you want to do? I'm going to build an arc on top of my... I'm going to turn my trailer basically into an arc. They're going to have to... What trailer? You don't own the trailer. What trailer are you talking about? Well, me and Amy, we, 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 move, we live together now, so we just kind of, you know, we, we're sharing, sharing the expenses. Okay. And I'm going to pull in my right. part of the income by building a restaurant. Building a restaurant? Yeah, I'm going to build a restaurant here on, in, the tr in the trailer park. And we're going to have a lot of customers. It's going to be shaped like a giant arc. No, you are not doing nothing in my trailer park. Oh, yes, I am. Um, a Amy's, Amy's kicking out. I'm kicking her out. Oh, no, you can't kick Amy out. She's behind the fucking rent for six months. What, the, what are you talking about? No, it's cool. We're, we're going to take care of that. We're going to... Like, no, you're taking care of that first, and then we talk. Yeah, well, no, I'm just letting you know. Uh, we, we will take care of it. I promise we'll take care of the six months. We, I don't go by promise. we got to take care of it first. Yeah. Before we go any more farther. Yeah, don't worry about it. We, we've got it all taken care of. How, I am worried about it. How much is rent, by the way, for, for like monthly here? But with, uh, including electricity, the way you guys do is over six hundred and fifty dollars a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna make up like yeah. more more than enough for that when we open the restaurant. 
So we won't have this you're, problem you're anymore. You're not going to open the restaurant until I gather everything down. This is my property. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. It's just that, you know, we've, we've drawn up the blueprints. We've had the contractor come over and look at everything. He, he's made sure that there's plenty of supports and the ark isn't going to crush the trailer. And no, 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 no. fine. Let me go back. I come back to the office this afternoon and then come over and we talk. Okay. Hey, would it be okay if we uh, lay down some asphalt on the ground for a parking lot? No. Cause we're no, gonna, nothing. We're going to have a lot of... Nothing until I talk to Amy. She's ignoring my call. She's ignoring me. You come to my office. Yeah, welcome, welcome to my I world, to you know. First, and then we go from there. You pretty much just summed up mine and Amy's relationship. The what? You pretty much just, just summed up mine and Amy's relationship. You know, that never returns my calls. What kind of relationship? But me and Amy, she's my girlfriend. But, you know, we have really bad communication yeah. issues. But I come to the office this afternoon. You and Amy come over. Okay. I've created a I've created some blueprints that you'll you'll need to look over. And I um you know whatever I, you got, just send it over to the office. Yeah, I've got a mock up. It shows talk. what it's gonna look like. This arc is gonna be bigger than the entire trailer park. It's gonna be bigger than anything in the trailer park. It's gonna be very tall. Like fifty feet tall. It's a fifty foot tall yeah. arc that people can come and eat in. You come over to the office. With your idea, with Amy, and we go from there. Okay, okay? that sounds great. But, you know, we're going to do it no matter All what. Right. We don't need your permission. We're just going to do it. Oh, yeah, you didn't need my permission. You don't do shit without my permission. Oh, no. My no. Property. Who do you think you are? No, we, we, okay. we don't need your permission. This, this, ain't no, this, this, this ain't no suburbs. This is a trailer park. We can do what we want. Just come to my office this afternoon, okay? Okay, but look, I, I've got a friend that has some leftover asphalt because he's a asphalter, and he's going to come over and lay down some asphalt today, just no, like a little bit. No, he's going to do. I'm going to have asphalt if you get near my property. He's going to do a little bit every day until we have enough for a big no. parking lot. I says no. You come to my office, we talk, and then we go from there. Okay. Well, can I confess something? I'm not really in eight. I'm not really in twenty six. I'm in 23. I'm in trailer 23. I, I have nothing to do with Amy. 23? Yeah. No, like three, three, do do three doors down from Amy. I'm three doors down from Amy. I, I just, uh, I was just, I, I just what wanted to... What are you to, talking about? I'm, I'm not really Amy's boyfriend. That, that part, I was just, uh, th this is a sales tactic. I wanted to make sure, I wanted to feel this out, make sure you're okay with it. I'm actually. No, Amy. I'm not okay with nothing. I'm Amy's neighbor, and the arc it's gonna stretch over three trailers. It, we're gonna put trussles up, like you know that movie, um, the movie that's coming out, Ready Player One. You know how their trailers are all up on trussles. We're gonna. I'm not interested to talk about those kind of things. Yeah. You have ideas to come to my office. We're gonna have a four-level trailer. We're gonna have four stories. Stop the bullshit, okay? <laughs> Oh, man, I didn't want to get Amy in trouble. You know, she's six months behind on rent. What a shitty landlord letting someone get six months behind on rent. $600? That's 3600 bucks or so? Like, holy crap, Amy's never going to come up with $3,600. She's totally fucked. Why hasn't he kicked her out? But, yeah, I don't want to be the one to get her kicked out. That's why I was saying I was the neighbor. I'm trying to figure out which one Amy's would be. It doesn't look like the Google car went into the trailer park. It just kind of drove by it. It's probably afraid to go in there. I'm zooming in, but I don't see any numbers or anything. Like this trailer park, it's so shitty. Like it's like it's not like a uniform type of trailer. It's not like the trailer park boys. Like some of them are like mobile homes, like like you know, set down on a foundation. Others are just random trailers. There's one that's like really tiny. It's like a tiny house trailer. Shit's just all over the place here. But I'm gonna turn shit around over there. I'm gonna bring an economic boom to that area with my new trailer park arc. That's what it's gonna be called, the trailer arc. Amy's trailer arc. Roy and Amy's trailer arc. Yeah, that's it. Man, at this point, I just kinda wanna do a bunch of trailer park pranks. But I just did a search in my pranks directory for trailer park, and I don't see anything else in there for trailer parks. Oh well. I do have this guy that manages some apartment buildings. A guy named Steve sent me this number, and I called this last week, 
And I don't think I played it on a show. I think I just deleted the call because he sounded really grouchy. And I'm like, wow, you sound grouchy. Who's this? He's like, well, I'm not grouchy, but you don't even know what apartment you're in because I don't have anyone in apartment 203. And he just slammed down the phone on me. So I, I, I guess I'm going to try and call this guy again. Although I think I messed up my one chance. Steve gave me the names and apartment numbers of two different people. One was Corey in 203. There's another one in here that says Linus in 301. So let's see how this goes. Leasing office, can I help you? Hey, uh, I'm in 301 and I have a small problem. Okay. Uh, I was cutting into the floorboards. And uh, underneath the floorboards, I found some dead animals buried. Like a dead, it looks like dog, dog bones. Skeletons. You say you live where? In 301. I was cutting into the floorboards, you know? Like I took a circular saw and I was like cutting into the floor. Why would you cut and into the floor? What's that? Why would you cut into the floor? Uh, my metal detector kept going off right there. Which is weird because, you know, bones aren't metallic or anything. What apartment but are you in? What, what's your address? I've, I've told you several times now. I'm in 301. Well, clearly I have a whole bunch of 301s. That's why I keep asking you what's your address. Okay, well, don't be grouchy. Uh, I'm on Farnham. Well, fuck yourself. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, why don't fuck yourself, piece of shit? Why are you saying that? That's kind of mean. Because I'm a rude, rude fucking dude. Don't fucking forget it. I'm just. Why'd you put me on speaker? Are you showing off to your friends there? Yeah, because because we're here fucking your mom, bitch. Oh wow, that was a good one. Hey, you got me. Over here. Hey, hey, pass that hole over here. Hey, why don't you stop hey, being such a shitty off, landlord off. and help me with my problem, you idiot? <laughs> See, wasn't I right? Isn't that guy grouchy? Now I wish I would have kept that original call. Unless I actually played it somewhere else. I don't think I did, though. Thanks for that one, Steve. Let's see what else I have here in the request folders. Here's one from a guy named Michael. He says, I live in a small town, and we have a flower shop that is ugly and looks like crap. The woman who owns it is old and bitchy. Her flower shop smells like cat piss, and she parks her RV behind the store. Oh my god, the humanity. Hey, look, this is kind of like a trailer park call. She plays ugly bluegrass music. I think she needs some prank calls. Holy crap, Michael, I think you need to stop being so judgmental against this poor flower shop lady. I'm gonna put this number into Google. We're gonna see how ugly this shop really is. I bet you it's a nice little place. All right, I've got it pulled up on Street View. It doesn't look too ugly, I'm sorry. It's just a, it's a storefront building. It's like in a downtown type area. It's right next to a storefront church. There is a big dumpster in front of her place. Why is there a dumpster there? I think the place next door is being renovated. Oh, look, two doors down is a, a naughty shop. Naughty gifts. Let's go around back and, oh, yep, yeah, look, she's got a trailer there. Violation, violation. She can't do that. Who does she think she is? I'm going to call her up, Michael. Don't worry. I'm going to take care of everything. Good afternoon. Lover shop. Hi, this is Roy from the comptroller's office here in... Uh-huh. And, um... I'm calling about that trailer out back. Um, the mayor was telling me that she thinks that trailer makes it look like a bunch of hobos live there or something. The tra what trailer? She said, said there's a trailer out behind your shop. It's a, as it looks like hobos live there. Yeah. Well, yeah. if they if he considers that a 36 foot holiday ramble or presidential looks like hobos live in it, he needs to have his head examined. Well, look, you don't. He can pay buy one for about eighty thousand dollars. You don't have to be bitchy about it. I, I, I'm just. I'm not. I'm just stating the fact. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, anyway, why don't you move that thing out of there? Like, get it out of there and, you know, put, put it by your home or something. Why can't you put it by your home? Because we have a plug-in back here. We use it. What? I'll let you talk to my husband. Well, no, I'm kind no, of no. busy with Valentine's Day right no, now. No, I don't want to talk to your husband. Like, uh, me and him don't get along. I, I'm just, like, what, what are you guys living back there? Don't you have a home? No, we don't live back there. We have it stored there. We have a place for it to be plugged in. It has been there since we've had a camper there since we bought our first camper. And why all of a sudden it has to be moved, I don't know. Well, it just makes the whole place look trashy. It makes the whole area look trashy. It does? Very trashy. I've yeah. never heard. Well, that's what the mayor says. If you wanted me to tell you about what looks trashy, go down to the property that the city now owns that hasn't been mowed all summer. Oh, shut up. 
Also, the music that you play in your shop, that bluegrass, that shitty bluegrass, uh, the mayor's saying she doesn't like, he doesn't like that either. It's ugly bluegrass music. Do you think you could play something, you know, like that's just less hobo-y? I don't know who you are, but I believe you're pulling my leg. No, I wouldn't pull your and leg I about this. Because I have your phone number and I can call you back. And I bet you can't. I'm calling from a special system. It does not allow callbacks, especially from hobos. Okay. Especially from people with crappy right. trailers. Well, honey, I crappy, uh, ugly uh, trailers. 36-foot four-slide Corian is looks crappy. Tell Mr. Hickson to come down and talk to me in person. It sounds like you're compensating. <laughs> Well, now I want to talk to the husband. Let's call right back. Talk to the husband. It is a nice trailer. I'm, I'm kidding about that. You know, it's like a big old trailer. One where the sides pop out and everything. Big old fancy trailer. Yes. Hey, put your husband on. You said you are going to put your husband on. Maybe he's more reasonable. No, well, he's not here. He's out delivering flowers. Oh, then why'd you, why, why'd you say you're going to put him on then? Eh, yeah, okay. I'm sorry for doubting you, Michael. That is an ugly flower shop with a bitchy old woman, and I bet she smells like cat piss and plays bluegrass music all the time. I shouldn't have doubted you. You're a good man, Michael. Thanks for sending that number in. Here's one more. It's like a tenant's thing. It's not even in my tenant's directory because I didn't notice that it was here. I'm a little behind on reading my requests. But this one is from Rachel. Rachel says, hey, Brad, what you doing? I just realized I have this great recipient for a Tenants from Hell prank. Some background, this guy has a monopoly on California, Pennsylvania. Uh, California is a city in Pennsylvania, I guess. He rents out old, basically falling apart houses for way more money than they're worth. Last summer, he rented out a ton of houses to gypsies, literal gypsies. See this link about it. Okay, let's read this link. It says, Romanian seeking asylum or in, and there's the, uh, the pop-up that says, you have an ad blocker installed, so you have to pay for our newspaper. Fuck that, I'm not paying for shit. I'm just not going to read the article. Take that. I'll go ahead and put a link to this article, though, in the show notes if anyone wants to go look at that at snowplowshow.com. Make sure you have your ad blocker turned off. What's the problem with gypsies, though? Why don't people like gypsies? Now I kind of want to read the story. Needless to say, the residents of the town were not happy about their new neighbors who shit on sidewalks and cut off chicken heads in their yards. I'm not even exaggerating. Read the article. I can't. There's an ad blocker thingy on it. I'm not going to be told I can't block their ads. That seems very suspicious to me. What are they trying to do? Serve me up malware? Anyway, about a year later, they all up and left without paying any rent and leaving behind destroyed houses and trash. And oh, look, another article from a different newspaper. Let's see if I'm allowed to read this one. Roma Asylum Seekers Abandon California Owing Thousands of Dollars in Back Rent. The Roma Asylum Seekers who poured into California this summer drawing opposition from some neighbors have abandoned the borough while reportedly owing their landlord thousands of dollars in rent. Some of the families also left behind other unpaid bills and damage to many of the 32 rental units that were either owned or managed by the Vito Donito agency. They're gone. They don't leave a forwarding address, Vito said this week. The Romas, who are descendants of nomads, travel in family groups and are referred to as gypsies. The Romas have been persecuted in Europe since before World War II for a variety of reasons. The immigrants were attracted to the borough because it had a lot of vacant affordable housing due to enrollment declines at a local university. Donito in September and October began 18 eviction proceedings involving the Romas before district judge blah blah's online court records. Yeah. While they dismissed a couple of cases, he ordered judgments in Donito's favor for more than $30,000 in unpaid rent. Holy shit, I was talking about like Amy before owing $3,600 in unpaid rent. These people owe $30,000. Holy shit. And I thought gypsies just traveled around with like trailers and stuff. Just found parking lots and farms and stuff to park on. Paid farmers a couple hundred a month to hang out there. That's how it happened in Thinner. You know that Stephen King book that I've read a few times? That's, that's how they did it there. They just had all their gypsy trailers. And if the townspeople crossed them, they put curses on them. Made them have acne and get fat and turn thinner and stuff. I think if I was this veto guy, I would just lay off these people. Just be happy you didn't get a gypsy curse. The landlord said he doubted he would ever see any of the money owed to him by the Romas, some of whom also left behind unpaid hospital and rental car bills. The Romas were believed to have entered the country from Mexico 
and were later placed by the federal government into its Alternatives to Detention program because the nation's immigration detention centers have been at full capacity this year. Damn it, we gotta build that wall. Keep all these Romas out. The leaders of the family units were given ankle bracelets to allow the government to track their locations. I was supporting them, Danito said, adding he received an overwhelming number of complaints while they were living in California. California being in Pennsylvania. Man, now I kind of want to read the previous article where he was all supportive about him. He came to discover some families kept chickens in their residences and others were living in the borough without water or electricity. In all, there were 90 Roma families in the borough and in some cases, three families shared the same rental unit. Wow, sounds like a really exciting time in that town. So I guess I'm going to call this Vito guy or someone at his agency anyway. Dentino Agency, can I help you? Hey, is this Vito? Hello? Hello, is this Vito? Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm one of your tenants. Um, I just had a question. I've been digging out um, down underneath the house, like straight down. I've, I've done three sub-levels so far. And I was just wondering, wa- is it okay if I make a stair Excuse me. case? No. What? Oh, where <laughs> what? are you talking about? What house? On Liberty Street. Okay, you have an address on Liberty? Yeah, 129. Oh, 129? Okay, so what are you doing? You're digging down? Yeah, yeah, I've dug three sublevels so far. Um, like, And they're right now they're kind of hidden below the house, but I was wondering if I could just build a staircase, like maybe in the hallway, just have some stairs that go down to the sublevel one. I've already, you know, I've already got staircases down, like, below the house, like, down to sub-level 2 and sub-level 3. I have but no idea what you're talking about. I, I've dug basements underneath the house. Yeah. And uh, it's three levels of basement so far. I think I'm going to go ahead and do one more. As long you're, as like, 16 or 20 feet below the surface? Oh, way more than that. They, these are, like, uh, um, 8 foot tall. There's three of them. I don't know. It's, like, 30 feet or something. 30 feet. What are, you, what are you doing that for? Uh, just for more square footage. It, don't worry, it's all professionally done. I've put walls up. I've got joists up for the floors and the ceilings. Looks really good. I and just, you're, at, uh, you're, at, you're at what address again? 129 Liberty Street. I just didn't, oh, 129. Yeah, I just didn't want to put a hole in the floor up on top without asking you first to have the sta- staircase that goes down. Because right now we just go through a hole in the backyard. And we've started a tunnel network um, out of sub-level two. It's, it goes, why, are you, why are you doing this? Um, just more square footage mostly. Like, you know, we're just paying regular rent for the house up top, but now we have, like, three extra houses down below. Plus, we've got a tunnel. Uh, the tunnel goes underneath the street so far over to, uh, you know, over to the neighbor's house. I hired an excavator. <laughs> Not not into the neighbor's house. I mean, underneath the neighbor's house. They they don't know it's there or anything, but it's not hurting anything. It's I haven't got a clue to what you're talking about. I mean, I, you're jerking me around something here. No, I wouldn't jerk you around, sir. I, I just I I, uh, I wanted to find out. Can we put a hole up uh, up on top, like inside the house, to go down? Because it's kind of a pain to have to go outside every you're time. You're down there now. Uh, no, I'm in the house right now. We don't have phone lines down there yet. We're gonna install those next week. Along with internet. Well, how about I stop dunking? I've not, again, I have no idea why you're talking about it. I mean, who gave you permission to start digging in the ground? Dig, well, dig well it's not. Out? It's not a big deal. Like when we we move out, we can just. Well, wait a minute. Cover. Wait a minute. Who who said it's not a big deal? Uh, that was me. I just said that. I mean, but I'm just saying. Uh, what? Yeah, I don't. I I, I can't believe you know what you're talking about, or you're doing anything like that. I'll tell you, I'll stop down a little bit. Okay, well, we're just going to... No, I don't really want any visitors today. I'm going to be down in sub-level three. We're creating, like, one more level down. We're going to have four. We're probably going to open up a business down here. To do what? I don't know, whatever. But, you know, we have all the space. Right now, it's basically just a rec room. I mean, sub-level <laughs> one's like a rec room. <laughs> What's okay. What's so funny about that? Goodbye. Why, Goodbye. Why, why are you laughing? Why are you hanging up? What a dick. Hello. 
Hey, since you hung up on me, I'm going to take that as a, a affirmative. We can go ahead and I'm going to. So put, you're going to take it as I'll be down to look at it. I'm going to put okay? a stairwell in the kitchen. I'll I've already tell you that I'll be down to look. Hey, at Hey, you can't it, tell right? me what to do, motherfucker. What's he expect me to think? I mean, he just hangs up on me. I just have to make assumptions for myself. If they do that, that's basically an invitation to do whatever I want. All right, thanks for that one, Rachel. That was a crazy story that you had me read about gypsies. I remember at this one 7-Eleven I worked at in Oregon, they warned me about gypsies. Managers are all like, be careful, we got gypsies in town. They've come in a few times. And they actually came in. Like, this this little girl came up to the counter, dumped out a shitload of change all over the counter, like pennies and nickels and stuff, and was trying to get me to count them while some other people went, like, around the back. And, like, she was distracting me, basically. They probably shoplifted a ton of shit from me. And I don't think the girl even bought anything. She just took all her money and left. <laughs> Damn gypsies. Brad, it's uh, Gregory Joseph calling. Oh, hey. hey. In your defense, in that call where you deleted all that, all the uh, all the files of that woman. Um, you uh, you did say call her back, call her back at the end of the file. Uh, to uh, so uh, I'm assuming you uh, called back. That wasn't me. I apologize. What are you also, about? hey, uh, bring back the phone show. All right, I'm drunk, smugly every day. Bye. All right, bye, not Brad. He's talking about that AOL prank call that I had nothing to do with. Was I really on the end of that saying call her back? I don't think that was me. I did delete that from the show, by the way. I deleted, you know, I just deleted random bits out of the call to kind of shorten it up because it was long. But now I'm curious. Now. <laughs> <laughs> call her back. <laughs> it says deleting a whole bunch of things. That was not me saying call her back. You're drunk, not Brad. Go home. Hey, speaking of that lady, though, I tracked down her information and I tried to call her. She wouldn't pick up. Um, I didn't really know what I was going to say to her. I'm sure, like, whatever I say to her, it's just not going to turn out well. I was thinking about trying to, like, sort of interview her about the call. I put her number into Google. Like, it didn't exist anywhere, really. You know, it's a disconnected number. The one that I tracked down with those touch tones on the beginning. Oh, yeah, on the last show, I said those were probably a caller ID spoof card number thingy. But it was actually her phone number. I didn't catch it before because my DTMF decoder, it couldn't catch one of the phone numbers one of the digits being dialed on there, so it didn't look like a phone number. So I had to decode that one by ear, but it got the rest of them, and I've got her number here. Oh yeah, she, she moved to a different state and everything, and I managed to get the current phone number for her, and I don't really know what to say to her. I think, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and call her right now, though. Damn it, I'm supposed to be doing voicemails here. Now I'm making more calls. Hello, this is Sharon Ray. Let's see. Leave your message and... There she is, but it just goes straight to voicemail. I need to call her later at night, I think. Yeah, she's not there. But maybe you guys can suggest things that I should ask her. Because I was just going to ask her, you know, like, when did the call occur? Do you remember this happening? Did you actually lose stuff off of your computer? Why were they asking for Amy? I found Amy, too, by the way. She's, like, over in South Carolina now or something. North Carolina, one of those. I don't know. What do you think I should ask Sharon about this prank call she received 15 or 20 years ago? Is she even going to remember it? Hey, Brad, how do you get the number for the directors to make your prank calls? Also, this is your number one blank caller, and I want you to say, Hello, everybody. This is God! In your funny sound effect. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye-bye. Well, now I feel weird about it because you're asking me to. And what directory are you talking about? Like, people just send me directories. People just uh, Google, you know, like a uh, homeowners association directory, and they pop up on Google. Even if they're not really supposed to be public, they still show up sometimes. Hello, everybody. This is God! There you go. Are you happy? I don't really like the echo on this new machine as much as I like on my old mixer. But I can't seem to use that one anymore because of the way things are set up with it. I just want to go back to how things used to be. Hey, this is uh, Ryan from Kentucky again. It's been a while since I've called. Hello, Ryan from um, Kentucky. I was listening to show 430. This is gone. You, you couldn't think of a name of the song. And the song is Bully Wooly. Oh, jeez. And this? it was came out in like 65 that was a long time ago by yeah those guys who cares <laughs> who, who gives Sam a shit? the sham and the pharaoh woolly oh yeah those the guys the little red riding hood guys and in like 1965 yep. so probably give you that helpful little tip yeah yeah i think i figured that out by now keep making those shows and also i don't care because they're funny and i'm like really fucking behind so. yeah get caught up all right 
Bye. So you can stop giving me old info. We've moved on to Goodwill auctions and powder calls and adopt a median and stuff by now. Holy shit. Episode 430, that was forever ago. Hey, you trash bag. So, uh, you know, it's Gary Busey. Hey. Uh, Redbeard, my dad, he's trying to make this new cryptocurrency. He's called it Cash Bag Coin. Wow, he sounds like it's a bullshit. boring dad. Anyway, he's, uh, he's on the Cash Bag Coin website. He's guaranteeing, like, he's backing it with his own money. Like... And we don't have that much money. What like, sound I'm really financial decisions he's making? And I just want you to tell him. Just please tell him to stop. Just I, I we don't have Red the money to afford this. This is God. I just, Get a job, he, you stupid hobo. He said he would call, but quit being a gypsy. He said for five dollars a month, you should call him. I don't know, That's true. but anyway, shithead, you're a fucking garbage can, bro. Fucking hate yeah, you, man. At least my dad's Cactus. not buying bitcoins and stuff. Or whatever he's doing. Making his own Bitcoin. My dad's cooler than your dad. Oh, hey. Uh, it, it's Corbin Guy. Hey, and, Corbin uh, Guy. I, I'm catching up. Why'd you block me on guys. Facebook, Corbin Guy? What did uh, I do? Yeah, uh, th- this this is uh, just in response uh, to, to a voicemail. Uh, Crimson. Crimson. Uh, that guy. Hey, buddy. Uh, there, there, there's nothing wrong with uh, your telephone connection. But uh, you, you you speak like a mush mouth. Yeah, you do. Crimson. You sound like a Charlie Brown character. Take that. Wah, 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 wah. I totally Come agree. Come on, buddy. Learn to enunciate your words. I'm not trying to start a flame war. Yes, I love you are. You. I love you, buddy. No, you are. I really do. Okay, but uh, Crimson yeah, alone. Just uh, speak more clearly, okay? Yeah, don't get drunk so much next time. I can't remember Crimson's right. voicemail, right. what it sounded Love like. Love you. Bye. So I cannot confirm nor deny that Crimson speaks like a mush mouth. I can't remember. Hey, Brad, it's Cold Peppers calling. Um, first off, I know you killed John Bonet. Secondly, yep. a question for you. Um, are we considered phone losers when we listen to the show? Or what I exactly does one need to do to become a phone loser? Um, that sounds you can just good. Give me some information on that. That would be great. I'm really looking to uh, to, to boost my resume here. Thanks, Brad. Goodbye. You're welcome. Yeah, I don't know how it all works. You know, to get the hobo sewed, you have to pay for it. But hobos wouldn't pay for anything, so that doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense. Sure, you guys can all be phone losers. That sounds great to me. Wow, look at this. Two more voicemails from Corbin guy. I think I'll just save them for next time. Mostly because one is two minutes and 50 seconds. The other one is a minute and 50 seconds. Hey, what Brad, the hell? It's Drazy from Corbin. the Discord. I don't really talk much on there. I'm more of a lurker. But anyway, yeah, over the course of your Creeper. prank calling career, you have been called a lot of hurtful things by hey, many people. We were just talking about that on the beginning of the show. I think Jesse just recently from that Goodwill show was a good example of that. But you yeah. seem to play cool and blow it off. And I was wondering, has there been anything that a Roy Stippian said to you that legitimately pissed you off? Nah. You know, got really under your skin? Nah. And you want to just fire back at them? Now, I was really curious about that because you always... You're always so calm during it. Well, it's so, not yeah, real. That's all I want to know. It's all fake. Peace. It's not like they're really insulting me. They're they're like pissed because I'm saying shitty things to them. I have no rights to get pissed. I think somebody else asked this recently. And it's all just pretend. It's just a character. It's like doing improv. It's like radio theater. That'd be weird if I actually got mad at someone for insulting me back. I deserve Brad, it. Brad, it's JD. Yo, that guy that sent you that phone call about the freak radio yeah that's the same call i asked you about like uh i don't know a couple fucking years ago dude oh yeah um and you were like i don't think that was me just do a google did i play it before i don't remember playing it before search for freak radio but i think that it's funny that somebody else heard that same call and i was spelling freak like p-h-r-e-k maybe it's f-r or f-r-e-e i don't know a fan as am i uh and likened it to you um but yeah, I don't think it was you. No, it definitely and wasn't. I think I torrented that call or downloaded it off of Napster or some shit in 2000. But I don't know. Same call. I'm glad that you're actually playing it. I'm gonna actually go listen to it now. Um, Why? Uh, just, yep. Just okay. played it. Just listen to my show again. And was Freak Radio an actual show? Like it sounds somewhat familiar, but then it kind of sounds generic. Like there were probably a bunch of shows with similar names. Hey Brad, this is um, uh, my name is Chip Young. I just want to say, you know, what? Uh, all my friends and I love you, and we've uh, you know, been you know, loyalists to Ooh, the PLA yes. for 
years and I just want to say how awesome you are and oh are. shucks anyway I'm gonna go eat Chinese food while snorkeling later Okay, have fun doing that totally real thing that you're doing. Hello, Brad. It's me once again, Domingo the Cactus. I call you the last show. I finally got on the show. I'm happy about it. Oh, uh, you're the one with the shitty phone connection, but it sounds good this time. Uh, but, motherfucker, my my microphone was my microphone was bad. I, I was a big robot or it whatever. It was. Uh, that was a gypsy so microphone. Listen, listen okay. Uh, next time, uh, next time you call and you say some some shit like. Uh, uh, fucking, uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. You say, fuck, I'm tired, I'm sorry. Uh, you say, Sounds uh, like you're having a good time. Fucking, this voicemail. Brad Carter. Fuck. Yeah, you got me. Oh, How do I? And sorry, I'm going to have to delete these other two voicemails that you left. Long voicemails. Well, okay, I'll play this one. It's five seconds long. Let's see what this fuck is. Fuck my ass. I want to chick mick and fuck it and you're your chicken McNugget. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I played that one. So, yes, I should definitely delete this other one. It's probably Brad, just as Brad. good. Brad, Brad, Brad. Hey. Oh, I've got an, I, a brilliant idea that you're absolutely going to love, Brad. Oh, you're going to really, really, really love this Let's idea. You pretend you're a doctor. Remember, you're a doctor. I think you have, is it DD for doctor? Uh, yeah. And say that you're running a doctor's practice from your apartment. What and you know, go you wrong? start getting all weird with them saying you inject things into your pillow and stuff like that. And there's blood everywhere and stuff. Bye. Yeah, they, they wouldn't call the police for me on that, would they? Maybe I could say I'm a dentist or a psychiatrist or something. Or maybe I could call from a law office and say my client is suing you because on your property uh, she got some dental work done in apartment 4A. He runs a dental office out of 4A. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That's it for today's show. Thank you, FOD87, for sponsoring today's show. Visit the website to learn how to subscribe at snowplowshow.com. If you're still using the link over at phonelosers.com, you're a dirty hobo gypsy person that lives in a trailer park. Also, don't forget to listen to my other show, Mr. Dabalina's Wonderful World of Prank Calls. You can find that one at worldofprankcalls.com. I just released a new episode of that one yesterday. It has a bunch of old carding calls that you've already heard. And I recorded a new episode of Brad's Cactus Shack, but I haven't put it up yet. But in case you haven't heard yet, I created a feed for Brad's Cactus Shack. You can find that at notla.com. That's N-O-T-L-A dot com. Maybe I'll try and get that one up tonight. Okay, bye everyone. Here's some MC Lars. Drop my little sister off at San Jose State. Freshman hotties on the floor and they all look great. Spins in for logic. Wasted in college. <laughs> no. Mormons don't smoke weed. <laughs>